Cliff Serlin and Peter Propp are founders of Startup Westport, the town's public-private partnership for tech and innovation, drawing entrepreneurs and investors together. In just two years, Startup Westport has sponsored several big events, begun a mentorship program, and engaged, really, hundreds of Westporters. So congratulations, Cliff and Peter, and welcome to 06880, the podcast. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Great Pleasure to be here. So did I get that right? Is, is that the best way to describe Startup Westport? It's a very good way to describe Startup Westport. Uh, we're still in the process of helping uh, and starting to define exactly what that description should be. So we consider ourselves to be a work in progress, uh, thrilled with our launch, and uh, excited to see where the future brings us. So a little background. How did, how did it start? What was the genesis? Who was involved? What was the idea? <laughs> I'll take this one and then yeah. I'll turn it over to yeah. Peter. Um, so about two years ago, uh, not long after, uh, is it two years ago? Wow. Time is, uh, time's running away from us. About two years ago, not long after Jen, uh, Tucker was elected for a select woman, uh, sat down with Jen and just had a broad ranging conversation with her about all the changes that were taking place in Westport. And one of which was a unique demographic change that was happening as a result of the pandemic and all these people. Uh, we're flocking to Westport. And I know you've written extensively about this. And massive sea change was actually taking place here in town. And one of those was that part of this community that I had been involved with in New York, all these uh, founders, all of these entrepreneurs, all of these early stage uh, investors had now started to move out of New York City and were coming to Westport. And this ecosystem that I had been part of in New York was actually migrating to Westport. And it seemed odd that all these people who were now living in Westport were traveling back to New York City rather than engaging in the community. And so that was kind of the preliminary conversation ideation for, hey, let's get everybody together and let's see if we can actually create the ecosystem here so that people don't have to jump on Metro North and we can start to build out Westport as a tech ecosystem. Yeah, I mean, I think um, Cliff uh, has had a, a really extensive and successful career, both as an operator and a venture capitalist. And and so a lot of the people that were coming out were people he might have known from other uh, uh, transactions or, or opportunities. We've, we have had a number of VCs living in town, but going back to when I was roaming the, the sidelines of the, the ball fields, it was 90% you know, bankers, it felt like financial services was yeah. really the category that most hedge people funds. were funds. in hedge funds. Absolutely. Um, I, I'm an ex IBMer, so I, I was always looking for the tech people to talk to, and I never really, uh, would, would find them very, very rarely. Um, but yeah, co COVID, as you know, drove a lot of really smart people to Westport. They've, they have young families with kids, people, families from Brooklyn, families from Manhattan, families from elsewhere, uh, in the, in the five boroughs. And they wanted to be someplace that had the sort of um, services. Also, just they, they wanted to get into the, the into the onto the green grass and the and the fresh air. But I think when they got here, they realized there was a lot more they could do, and they started running into each other at the Starbucks um, and and the fancy coffee shops, and say, well, well, you know, why don't we get together? And and that sort of started inspiring uh, some conversations. Um, Cliff came to me. I think the group had been getting together for about six months to yeah. maybe eight months and um, and asked me if, if I would get involved. And my background past post IBM was running an incubator for startups in Stanford called Stanford Innovation Center, which had been part of the state program with state funding and and a whole set of objectives and, and guidelines and and uh, targets from the state. Um, and we ran that really well and, and grew it. And so I, I sort of knew the tricks. I knew the things we could do. And so what I said to Cliff was, absolutely, we should build Startup Westport. We should really make it happen. And we can do it quite easily if we just start getting together and putting a speaker on the stage at the library. Um, and it's been way more, uh, 
way more momentum, way more action, way more butts and seats than we ever thought we would get. I, I don't For think sure. in our wildest dreams we'd be having, you know, a full 400 seat uh, auditorium filled on, on a regular basis. Um, but it's been really, really exciting to see, you know, the the ideas around growing a startup community that I knew professionally. And then you put it into Westport where we had this influx of capital and tech people. And it's really, it's like alchemy. Yeah. Um, it's been almost scary at times because we know the potential is so strong. So who specifically are these new people that moved in during COVID and post COVID? What, you know, give me a, give me a sense of who they are. Yeah. Um, I'm actually going to, and we were just speaking about this uh, last night. I was uh, down at the beach, and I'm actually going to throw out a name. So Adam is the founder of Dig In, and both you and I were down at the beach walking around separately, and there was a lemonade stand uh, that you know Adam's kids had put up um, down at Campo Beach, and they just per perfectly represent this demographic. Adam is the founder of of Dig In. Uh, he moved out to Westport about three or four years ago. He has a six-year-old, a four-year-old, a newborn. So he and his wife are, you know, New York refugees who left Brooklyn and are now coming to Westport. And if you look at that demographic trend and using, you know, Adam as an example, there are countless numbers of young founders who have all of a sudden said, you know what, we started our business in New York, but now we're kind of aging to a place where, as Peter said, we need green grass, we need good schools, we need, you know, sports, we need arts. And where can you find that? A place that has that level of excellence, similar to New York, but has, you know, the green grass and the beaches, and that's Westport. And, and what kind of companies have they founded? Everything and anything. They tend to be, you know, tech-oriented, tech-enabled. Um, a lot of SaaS companies, uh, you know, one of our... Um, Board members um, is Dan Bikel, um, who gave a talk here. Dan's the uh, chief AI scientist for Meta. Um, and if you look across the board with regards to this migration that happened over the past three to four years, it's you know been from every and any aspect of technology. And we spoke about it. You know, Westport has transformed itself over the years. Originally, it was a farming rural community. Then it became a haven for uh, the arts. And it was always a small town. And then, you know, kind of looked to the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, and the orientation became far more financial. Marketing before that, then financial. Right? Yeah, you'll have you'll have more. Yeah. <laughs> Publishing, yeah. Publishing. Yeah, yeah. And But now we're at a place where if you look at our economy, we're like reflecting what's happening in our economy. And technology, innovation, startups, that's really where you know, you find the economic engine and that's now what Westport looks like. I think, I think, um, if you're looking for a particular vertical where you'd see a lot of here, it's not surprising that advertising technology is actually a big part of the portfolio. I think if you're looking across all the startup Westport members, by the way, we're close to 1500 startup Westport members at this point. It's not, not hundreds, it's close to 2000 wow. members in, in this thing. And, and, um, you know, our, our, our attendees are, you know, really interesting, come from every category you can imagine. Biotech is certainly an area where we have a number of, of members. Um, but, uh, you know, AI, marketing, um, advertising technology, um, there's just a lot of cool stuff that's happening. And, and what do you see the role of Startup Westport as? Is it just sort of a, being able to bring people together to network? Yeah. Yeah. And, and to facilitate that, or is it something more? We're an enabler. Um, that's really what we want to be. We want to enable... It's sort of a bad word to you. <laughs> <Is that? laughs> okay, well, I'll spin it into... Uh, we're a community. Um, we're creating a community that is supportive, um, that is um, looking to engage, um, and to bring people in. And so when people ask about Startup Westport, what is it? We obviously have these major tentpole events where we've had, you know, Jimmy Patero and Mike Greenberg. We've had uh, from ESPN, we've had Dan O'Keefe, who's the chief innovative officer for the state of Connecticut. Uh, we've had a number of engaging uh, forums where we've brought in local entrepreneurs. 
that's, you know, kind of the headline, but we also have the mentorship program, which you have uh, profiled and we appreciate that was, uh, that's led by Noah Fenn and Susan Fenn, uh, where we're actually bringing people together um, to help enable mentorship, which is, you know, people that are launching businesses, people that are looking to um, ideate and think about how they can actually um, advance their own personal ambitions with regards to, to creating opportunities. Um, but beyond that now, we're starting to look deeper into these special interest groups. Um, we call them SIGs, um, where people of like minds can actually come together and just meet and hang out and, you know, you know, throw ideas, you know, out and kind of get support from people that are local. And so we have three groups that have launched. We have uh, marketing that's being led by Peter. Mm -hmm. uh, we have cybersecurity that's being led by um, Mark Frankel. Um, who's the founder of Manifest Cyber. And we have our third, which is AI, which is going to be led by uh, Dan Bacall and, I'm sorry, uh, Dan and, and Michael, Michael. Michael G, I'm going to say. Michael G. He's got okay. a long name that I always um, mangle. Yeah. And, and He's a very nice guy. <laughs> yeah. And more, um, and more requests um, for additional um, SIGs. So to wrap back to your original question, what are we? We are looking to create community, to bring people together, to help support whatever their ambitions are. Stories. 06880 is all about stories. So give me some <laughs> stories from those groups, from the mentorship. Go ahead, Peter. Um, well, I, I mean, I, I think there's, there's been a, a number of people who have met and been hired um, through, through Startup Westport, and I'm, I'm going to blank on uh, exactly who, who got hired by who. Um, but we, we do know with, with um, Manifest Cyber, which is a really interesting company that that is um, building an essential tool in the cybersecurity area, where um, essentially defense department contractors need to be able to show all the software that goes into their software. And just to diverge, diverge you know, move off for a second, um, a lot of software these days has components from a lot of different places, and so Manifest lets those software vendors that are trying to sell to to a defense contractor say. Here's exactly what's in our software, and therefore you should be comfortable that it doesn't have a security issue. So Manifest, he was here. He met, I think, Fody. Met Fody and he, Jen. He met Chief Fody, Fody and Jen, our yep. Chief Fody and, and, and Jen Tucker, our, our first select woman. They connected them to uh, some players with the state of Connecticut, and the players of the state of Connecticut connected them with the Defense Department, and he won a significant uh, contract with the Defense Department. That happened in, like, maybe the first or second month of, of startup Westport. So that's a really high bar that we may never, <laughs> we may never, you know, reach again, yeah. but that's an amazing example of someone who actually won a significant piece of business that's going to impact their ability to, to grow, to deliver great value, uh, and to hire. Um, and it all happened because of connections that were made, uh, here. So it really is a public private partnership. Um, how is the chief of police involved? Fody is incredible. Um, I don't have enough good things to say about Fody. Uh, Fody, like yourself, um, is an incredible asset to Westport because he's, it's, it's, it's unfair actually to limit him uh, to be chief of police because he's so active in the community and he, you know, represents everything uh, that we should aspire with regards to our civil servants. He obviously has his day job, which is chief of police, but because of his networking, because of his uh, community involvement, he knows everybody. And so whenever we need a door open, whenever we need a connection, Fody is the first person uh, that we speak to and he couldn't be more supportive across the board. We hold our, uh, our monthly board meetings uh, in his office. And so a lot of what we've been able to do, to be fair, is if you look at our organization, and I will do a plug right now for, for sponsorship and anybody who wants to support what we're doing, uh, we'd love to speak with them. But a lot of what's been, um, what we've been able to accomplish here is as a result of utilizing existing resources that are available to us in this community. So here we are in this beautiful library um, the Westport, uh, the Westport library where we have had a majority of our events. We couldn't have had stronger support from Bill Harmer and his group here who we greatly appreciate. And 
each one of like the different events that we've had, we've been incredibly cost efficient. And so it's enabled us to punch way above our, our weight class. And so this uh, collective lift um, that and support that we felt from the community, Vody being a perfect example, it has enabled us to grow to, as Peter said, you know, 1,500, 2,000 people and to do it in an incredibly cost effective way that while we list ourselves as a public private partnership, we cost nothing. Like we don't, we're not taking any tax dollars. We are just here to give back. Yeah. And some of the events you've had, um, you've had minority businesses, you've had women. Yep. Uh, talk about some of, you know, well, some of these big events. What what we really try to do frequently, we we do, we do have some events where it's a subject where we want to go deep on the subject, and we can, you know, bring the right person. And Dan Bickell it's a great example. I think we'll have uh, at some point a, a cyber tech event that really digs in. Um, hopefully not too low. Hopefully at the right level where where the average business person can can gain something out of it. Um, but there's a lot of really strong groups already uh, working. Uh, within Connecticut and Fairfield County, and so we try to leverage those groups. So um, we we um, we work with Tidal River, which is a fund that's been established. One of the leaders of the fund is is Anne Lamont, the the First Lady of Connecticut, um, along with Allison Malloy, who's one of the leaders at Connecticut Innovations, the state venture fund. And um, Guy uh, Gally Gashal, Gashal um, was able to put together a great event of of women entrepreneurs. They told an amazing story, and they they really did a lot of the work, frankly, which is great. They they figured out who was going to be on the panel. Galia ran a great interview set. It was really nice. So we're we're I, I view it. I, th I think Cliff does too. We we've built a platform, and now we can work with other groups to plug in a really good idea. So our our next event um, uh, is on September twenty fourth, and that's on uh, B corporations, public benefit corporations. And these are companies that are for-profit companies that also have a social mission. And um, so uh, a, a friend of ours runs a consulting firm um, in this area, Jen Gorin. She knows a lot of the more interesting players in the B Corp space uh, in Connecticut. And she's going to be running a forum where, where we're not doing much except to write about it, promote it, ask you to write about it. You know, that's coming up. Um, and it's, it's going to be an excellent event on a new topic people don't know much about B, B Corps, but they know the companies, you know, they've heard of Patagonia um, and the, the, the biggest B Corp, uh, uh, one of the biggest B Corps in the, in the country right now is, is based in Connecticut and that's athletic brewing. So there's a really interesting movement in this area and Westport, you know, should know about it. We expect yeah. to have a lot of people here to learn about it. I know you're excited about the November program. I am. We were talking about that before. Yeah. You want to? Yeah. Let the cat out of the bag? Sure, sure. So on uh, November 25th, which is the Monday before Thanksgiving, we're going to actually have what we call the uh, Young Innovators Forum. And so there's a great story uh, coming out of Staples where there are, uh, I'm sure there are more, but four very, very significant uh, venture-backed companies that have raised tens of millions of dollars, each led by a founder under the age of 25 years old. These are Staples graduates. These are, you know, I'm gonna use the word kids, um, but these are young entrepreneurs who have all started and found, you know, their way as a result of their education and going through Staples and have now gone out and created incredible businesses that the venture capital community on a national basis has gotten behind and so we're going to bring them back. Um, we're going to celebrate uh, their success. And uh, it just turns out that uh, all four of the founders were part of a computer science class at Staples. Uh, and uh, we'll have Molly O'Shea, um, who's also a, a good friend of Peter's. Um, and Molly is, I'm going to guess, probably a graduate around 2014 and she's gone out to yeah. become a very successful venture capitalist and reporter in the space and so she'll actually moderate the forum and it'll be a opportunity for us to uh to celebrate uh our our own who have gone out and uh and made us proud wow. yeah that's been an exciting event so these all these people in in westport that, that we're talking about these tech people these entrepreneurs these innovators 
are, are they working by themselves? Are they, do we see them in, in Gigi and Joe's? I mean, yes. where are they? <laughs> they're, they're everywhere. They're, if you go to Gigi and Joe's in the morning, first thing, if you go to uh, Odalise, which is where I hang out, or, or Starbucks, you're going to see a lot of meetings happening early in the morning. Um, uh, you know, every coffee place in town is probably hosting yeah. m meetings between entrepreneurs and, and their colleagues, investors, or, or whatever, I would say many, many times a week. Um, and they probably were happening to some degree beforehand, but more of those connections are being made. No question. And, um, but in terms of how people spend their day, a lot of them work on Zoom calls most of the day. Um, that's why they're really happy to come out at night and, and have, a, have a glass of wine and, and get to hear about a new topic and meet some new people. And most excited, they're, uh, they don't have to jump on Metro North and take an uh, hour and a half train ride into the city to actually uh, you know, continue to, uh, to expand their business. Right. They can do it from Westport. Um, and that's one of the beauties, right? That's, that's, that's the beauty of, of Westport is that we have all of these incredible amenities, um, but we also have access to the city. Is the word getting out? Do do are people starting to see Westport as this tech slash innovation hub, or well, has it not yet caught on? I think we do. Yeah. <laughs> I think I that's think your job. We we well we 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 certainly think it it, it has yeah. become, and I think that it's it's going to get some national attention eventually. Yeah. I but you know, I, it's not something that I, I really worry about. Yeah, no, I, I don't worry about it at all. I mean, look, at the end of the day, I think it's the lifestyle um, that draws people to Westport. I can't say that, you know, the existence of Startup Westport is going to be the motivating factor. It's complimentary, though. Um, and hopefully over time, it becomes primary. And as a result of, um, you know, the, uh, the seeds that are planted now, that more companies like a Manifest Cyber will continue to grow and they'll start hiring more people and more people will come to Westport as a result of, this, um, you know, this this community that's that's being populated right now. So we're excited about it, and I think that you know it's a symbiotic uh, relationship between the town, uh, its proximity to New York, and this incredible um, you know migration of you know intellectual capital that's coming to Westport. Are are the realtors selling it? So it's a great question. Um, I, you know, I've spoken to Jen Tucker about this, and Jen, I believe, actually goes around um, and meets with the local realtors. I think that we have an opportunity to actually kind of join her um, on those, uh, on those, uh, those, those, uh, those walkabouts, and we could do a better job of actually getting in front of the realtor community because that is, um, they're one of our our largest megaphones here in Westport. I think we do need to do a better job of doing that. Right now, um, you know, we have, you've done an incredible job. Um, we can't thank you enough for all of your support. And it should go, you know, it's important to, to call it out. Like every time we do something, you support it, you write about it, but you've also gotten involved on a more granular level. Um, so we thank you for your support of the mentorship program. Um, and this is a collective effort. So we, we greatly appreciate everything that you do. It's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's energizing. It's, yeah. it, I'm having a great time, you know, watching what you do and, and being part of it. Uh, and, and I know you've, Dan O'Keefe, yeah. uh, is, is a big supporter. You want to talk about Dan and identify him? Well, sure. I mean, we first, we first met Dan. I mean, you might've known him before. Yeah. Dan, we have known him before, but he, he was, um, named to the, the, the state uh, head of innovation. Um, but then within six months, he's actually now um, the chairman of the Department of Economic Development, Economic Community Development, the state. So it's the top economic development job in the state of Connecticut. He's a big fan of our work. Um, when we need something, we can certainly ask him for it. We haven't needed much. We've needed him to come by and be a speaker yeah. occasionally. But um, it's, you know, the state is is very focused on growing uh, its startup community, its investments <clears throat> in entrepreneurship, not only state-run, but in, in, in many different pockets. Um, so Yale is certainly doing a lot of good stuff. UConn is doing a lot of good stuff. So um, the, the state really has a lot of great programs going on, and we can complement them and let people know about them. But for me, it, com coming out of my, my previous role where I, my, my work was funded by the state, it's much more fun to not need them. 
and mm-hmm. and it'd just be complimentary, frankly. Yeah. Um, and and Westport doesn't really need funding from those sorts of bodies to do our work, and we shouldn't. We we have uh, so much talent and assets that we can deploy. Um, what's happened now this year is we have major sponsors coming on board. So our, our first major sponsor um, was was uh, Wigan and Dana, um, but but now we have Hospital for Special Surgery as a sponsor as as of this year, and um, that's a terrific you know nationally recognized organization, and we expect to have more sponsors at that level going forward, and that's going to help us do more of the work that we like to do uh, without asking for any. Uh, help from the state, which is yeah. really perfect for us. I, I guess what I'd add to that is um, we're apolitical. Um, we aim to be non-controversial. Um, that's because we support everyone um, and that's our ambition. And so um, I had the opportunity about two months ago to give the uh, invocation at the RTM meeting. And uh, in speaking to some of the representatives, like, oh yeah, we love Startup Westport. This is great. You know, you don't take any of the resources, you know, you're, you know, giving back to the community. And I think that that's one of the things that we're most proud about, quite frankly, uh, is that at this point, you know, the engagement is incredibly rewarding. The idea that we have over 1500 email addresses and we sent out, um, an email, uh, our newsletter, we sent it out on a monthly basis. And Peter and I were texting yesterday and, in the middle of the summer, in August, we had an open rate north of 70%. That means a 1,000 wow. people wow. are actually reading our yeah. newsletter. And the click-through rate is ridiculously high. And so this is an engaged, active audience. And the feedback is consistently positive. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to marshal whatever resources we need in the most efficient way to put out programming, to bring people together, and just kind of support the overall initiatives that are that are taking place naturally here in the community. So I guess the last question is, what's ahead? You know, do you have, is there something on the horizon that <laughs> you haven't told anybody about yet, but you're going to tell I, now? Yeah, you, know, <laughs> you know, we have a, we, we do have a, a, a big em- empty box, which is who's innovator of the year this year or for 25, because we yeah. did an amazing job uh, with Jimmy Pataro from ESPN. Jimmy, innovator- Jimmy was the CEO, is the CEO of ESPN. And a Westport resident. And he, you know, gave they, a great talk. Yeah. Gave a great talk. The ESPN people gave us so much support and it was a really fabulous night. But that set a high bar also. Right, you know, right. we're, we yeah. keep on doing these things where we said, all of a sudden we've set a really high bar and we're like, oh no, yeah. now what do we do next? So there's a big, you know, square with nothing in it. For, the, for next year's uh, Innovator of the Year. Yeah, so we're, we're always open to ideas. We're <laughs> always open to feedback. Um, you know, Jay Norris, who's been an active uh, participant and uh, also one of the co-founders, we got to get Jay out into the community and uh, and see who he can, uh, he can pull <laughs> we in can because he's an incredible, incredible uh, Rolodex. Oh, I can't say Rolodex but, anymore. No one's going to know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Especially speaking about yeah, tax. Yeah. He has an incredible network of people that we can draw from. But I, th- I think there's also opportunities for people to volunteer. Um, there's, it's volunteering, as you know, is super rewarding. Um, when you're in the middle of something, you get to know the people you're volunteering with really well. So if you don't know a lot of people in the community, you can volunteer and all of a sudden you know people in the community. Um, we're very open and interested in capturing those volunteers and, and finding the stuff that they want to do. Um, and so that would be a request. And, and the best way to find out more is? You can, I mean, we are easy to find, um, but it's, uh, you can always email us at info at startupwestport.org. Uh, or go to you know, the website. Go to the website, startupwestport.org. Hit us up on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're easy to find. Or find them via some new technology that none of us know anything about yet. <laughs> <laughs> Cliff Serlin and Peter Propp, Founders, co-founders of Startup Westport, thanks for being here on 06880, the podcast. And to all those who are watching, keep an eye out for startupwestport.org. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Take care.